last week we brought up that Kentucky Kingdom was teasing a map of some sort with different locations, and we were going, oh, well, it could be these parks, it could be uh, this park, it could be here, there, and we didn't really know what we were looking at. I think we even came to some point where we were like, this might could, could just well very well be just a tease from the Kentucky Kingdom social media team. We didn't know what we were looking at. However, we did... Actually, though, do you remember that I actually said, because Jefferson actually posted his personal Twitter about him throwing darts at a dartboard and just saying me coming up with like random places for a background for an image. Yeah. And, uh, and then we said, yeah, it sounds like it's not, there's nothing to this. And then I said, or Unless, yeah, maybe somebody <laughs> maybe hit, hit a nail dart. on the head. Maybe someone hit and the he's dart. he's trying to cover his track. Maybe the dart reference was, right. was exactly purposeful. Like, Hey, I, Someone hit the head. They hit the middle of the, and, of the uh, dartboard there. Yeah. Hey, and and, and the actual There's original he, tweet like, I saw, the original tweet I saw from Kentucky Kingdom that said, "Read between the lines." It said like, "I'm having a roller coaster of a day." Read between the lines, and they did like a bunch of different like graphs that were like going up and down like a yeah, roller coaster. I did see, did that. You see that tweet? All right. So read between the lines. They were, they actually hit a tweet on there. If you clicked, like, there was a hidden tweet that they, they hid from the actual com- – I guess somebody commented and they hid it. And so if you clicked on that hidden tweet, it was someone replying, Hershen, question mark. So I think that might have been them. Oh, yeah. interesting. So they were kind of – they were giving us some some bits and pieces there. I didn't see that until it was too late, until we already figured out what happened. And that is that Kentucky Kingdom has been bought by Hershen. Um, all of the people that were stating, oh, I think it's lining up with all the Hershen properties were – the correct ones. That's what this was. Um, the park has been, well, not acquired by Hershen. The The right to operate the park has been acquired by Hershen. I mean, the, the Kentucky Fair State Board still owns the park. But they... Well, have, do, they, do they own the park? They own the land. Do they own the rides? I believe they own the rides, yes. I believe, all that, I believe all that Hershen owns is the right to operate the park. I think that's all they own. I believe all the property okay. is belonging to the State Fair Board, yes. And that's why the State Fair Board has such a say in, in everything. Well, yeah, I know. State like, it's, it it's, it's it's all kinds of a convoluted mess down there. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know what the status of the rides were. Because when Six Flags, there was an issue when Six Flags left because they were like, okay. Well, and that's exactly why Six Flags couldn't just demolish everything like they planned on. Yeah. Um, is because I believe Kentucky Kingdom is owned. All, all the assets are owned by the board, and yeah. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, the deal includes uh, Hershen having to inject $7 million into the park in capital funding. I don't know if there's a specific time limit that they have to invest that money in, like if it's the next five years, $7 million, or if it's the next two years or one year. I don't know, but I did hear that, $7 million. This wasn't from the actual press conference. That was, this is just something that I heard uh, from different news sources. Um, the price paid up front, however, interestingly enough, is not the actual final price for the park. Uh, it seems that the price that, that yeah. the final price will be deemed based on how well Kentucky Kingdom performs over the next three years. So that was interesting. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I really like that because it's almost like there's, no, I, this is not an. This is not me saying they're going to do this, but it does kind of give somewhat of an incentive to, to have the park not perform that. That's well. what I thought, and and people were taking then, that as like everyone seems to be taking that as like a, oh that's great, and I'm like wait, but think about that. If the park is doing fantastically, then the price will be more, right? Like that's what I yeah. interpret from that. But some people, a lot of people are going, no, that's a good thing. Maybe I'm somehow. Maybe we're not understanding it correctly. I'm, maybe yeah, I may not. Be. There may be like some other stipulations that we're yeah, not exactly. understanding. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know, but that that was an interesting fact. Um, of course, the reason for this buyout is because Kentucky Kingdom was not doing well financially. Uh, they underperformed attendance wise. Actually, actually, uh, I did see. I did read an article where Ed Hart actually said, and this kind of has me a little bit concerned. Um, for, for a reason that I don't think people are really thinking of, um, Ed Hart actually said that the ownership group is well healed and ready to continue even after 
the issues that they've had and with COVID. Uh, he said the exact but opposite said, in the press conference. No, but he said they're getting up there in age. He said that, yes, but he also said that COVID took a large toll on the park. And no, no, he did. He did say that. But what I'm saying is, he he said that they are, like they they don't feel like they're in a position. I mean, I'm not saying that COVID took a hit. That's a definite. He even was saying that there. Yeah. But he was okay. saying. I thought you were the saying that that reason for okay. him. No, the main reason wasn't that they felt like yes. they were kind of screwed. It was that they feel like. They're getting older. I didn't interpret him as and, saying it was the main reason, but I interpreted it as that him definitely saying that was a, a factor. Yeah. And he himself so, sa- stated that, I mean, it's always been Ed Hart's plan to sell the park. Um, we've known that. Like, that's, just, that's been documented here's, since here's 2018. The only, we knew that. the only thing going through my mind right now is that I hope there's not a medical reason that uh, yeah. this got sparked. Um, I don't know. It was just like when I, I was just reading some things and some things that, that Ed had said, and I just kind of had this like, I don't know. And I'm not, so it, there's no confirmation of that. Do not take that as a fact. I don't know anything. That is just purely like, just something that was like, huh. Clicked in your mind. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. It's It's kind of... It's interesting, but I, like he definitely said that they were, like it was, like the ownership group definitely was, like they felt like they were up to it, but they just felt like they were getting up there in age, and it was time to, to, uh, to move on. Um, and it they did say they did also say that other park chains had actually approached them. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah. Ed Hart actually approached Hershen. Yeah, he reached so out to Hershen, exactly. Hershen is who Ed wants it to go to, so. And I think that's definitely the best option out there right now, for sure. Um, oh, yeah. Hands down, I think they are. Hershen's goals for the park include, they're, they're pretty great, uh, building the appeal for multi-generational families, Hosting family-friendly seasonal and themed events and festivals, which a lot of people are happy about. They think that there's a possibility of seeing some Christmas and maybe even extended winter events uh, for Kentucky Kingdom. Because Kentucky Kingdom's never operated, I believe, into the winter season. So this would be the first time in at least recent history that they've done that. And a lot of people are also concerned that their Halloween event, Hallow Scream, will not be returning because Hershen is very it seems conscious about making sure that these events are more for families than they are for those that want to be scared or go through haunted attractions and, and get that, that, that adrenaline pumping. It's more for like Dollywood, for example, does like that lantern events, I believe. And then, you know, there's like pumpkin decorations all throughout the park. They do more of that family friendly Halloween events. So some people are concerned that the hell event well, won't return. The interesting thing is one of the other major concerns was that they were going to discontinue the sale of alcohol. Yeah. Yes. And that is not the case. They actually have made that known. They they are actually seeking out additional alcohol uh, partners to actually sell in, in the park. Yep. Um, so there's a possibility that this is maybe Hershen wanting to do... Try different things out? Stuff, yeah, like stuff that they can't do at Dollywood and Silver Dollar City that they want to do. Yeah, and I'm I'm, um, I'm curious to see how much we see like an improvement upon this Hallow Scream event too. Because if you look at the previous year, how, like I think it was 2019 when they last did Hallow Scream, it looks pretty cheesy. It's not very done. It looks like something you might see at a local haunt attraction. It's not it's not great theming or decorations or anything. I'm curious to see if Hershen maybe is like, hey, let's step it up and get some good decor, some good lighting, some cool th- uh, smoke effects, do something like that. Because I know Dollywood, even though they don't do a Halloween event meant for horror, they do have good lighting and good uh, decorations and good decor and good um, atmospheric uh, tools, like smoke and fog, I believe they use. So I wonder if we see that or if they're just going to say, ah, let's just use what we already have with Kentucky Kingdom and, and just use those decorations. I don't know, but that would be interesting to see if we see Hershen actually try to do yeah. 
uh, a, a Halloween event, a scary Halloween event too. That would be interesting to see because we know they're such they're they're pretty good at, at trying to create that atmosphere, uh, that immersion in the atmosphere within yeah. within all of their events. Yeah. So it would be really interesting to see Hirsch and do something like that. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a very very curious thing. Uh, yeah. it, it will be interesting to see. Um, I mean, this whole this whole situation has me like, you know, and I I also want to be clear. People are reading my tweets. Like, I, it seems like when I say something, people have a knee jerk reaction to what I said, and they don't really listen to what I'm saying. Because uh, I've had a couple people already say like, "Well, why are you being so tough on Hirsch?" And like, that's not my intent. Um, it my initial concern with this was as soon as this was announced there were a ton of enthusiasts that were just like oh well dollywood and silver dollar city are absolutely amazing so this is nothing but good for kentucky kingdom and i have like there's nothing that says this is isn't good i this this could be really good and the fact that ed hart likes this arrangement is a, a good feather in that hat yeah but there's also you can't just look at Dollywood and Silver Dollar City because that's not all of Hershend. Hershend has also had some failures as well. And um, yes, everybody comes up with their reasons of why they well, why doesn't that count? I don't know. For some reason, when Hershend does a terrible job at a park, it should be forgiven because it, it like the park's not worth anything. But when Cedar Fair like doesn't do much with Michigan's Adventure, Cedar Fair is just a horrible company. I don't understand why they're different. Because it's the same exact thing. Yeah, it's not. Um, you know, you can't just erase that part. I'm in no way saying this is bad and Hershen's going to destroy the park. I'm just saying, don't. You know, there are there's there's look at the whole picture. Um, broaden I, I your mean, I, broaden it, your view on this than just right, oh do, dollywood and silver dollar city are are it and that's all they've done yeah just don't, don't right, do that exactly yeah cuz this park this park cannot be a dollywood and silver dollar city no it it's will not just be not, yeah. it's not going to be possible yeah uh, and i don't want it to be I, I there's just there's not enough room there's you know i it's just it's not going to be that so don't I don't want to see people get their expectations up like, oh, this is going to be the next Dollywood when it's not. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, I, I don't know what happens. Like, well, you know, just pay attention. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is, I think this, I think this could be potentially, potentially be really good. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. And continuing on with the Hershend goals here for the park. Uh, I, I said they are going to build appeal for multi-generational families. I said hosting family seasonal events and festivals. They're also going to be enhancing product and guest experiences through rebranding and the addition of Hershend owned programming, such as costume character appearances, expanding of the off season to provide entertainment to more guests and building relationships with state and local tourism partners to increase awareness and enhance travel to Kentucky kingdom, Louisville and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I will say, I think that is something huge with this, is I think, I have a feeling that some of the the, uh, the issues with the fair board may have been, the fair board just didn't like Ed. I think and so. I think they felt like he was like a rogue. That, a rogue. Yeah, like they, they, just yeah. Didn't, they just didn't like him. So I feel like, match. yeah, um, I feel like, does this and the fact that the fair board unanimously voted to approve this i think that means that hershen may have a better chance of working with the fair board i think they um, like that it's a corporate at, and a uh, corporation and it's run well and it has all these values yeah. of like family and all that and it just seems very like good yeah, hearted but, wholehearted but, corporation and so they feel at like the same time the fair board has been notoriously evil to the park so well, um, and also i feel like there's gonna... more, maybe ed saying hey i can't do this and i can't fight these legal battles i can't do all this crap anymore maybe a corporation yeah, can actually could withstand be. some ground with the board here and actually get some leeway yeah because i'm sure they formed. have in-house counsel yeah so it could be like, yeah, hey, that's a, get this corporation sure. in here that can actually deal with this stuff. I can't do this anymore kind of thing. <laughs> and 
And and if, if you watch the press release, to me it was absolutely hilarious. Like the head of the board of the of the Kentucky State board was like, he seemed really like out of it. I don't know. He was like weird, and he was like his sentences weren't. <laughs> I swear, go back. I swear. I swear, go and watch. I, I have, he only spoke I just for like a minute a and a half or two minutes. He only spoke for like a minute and a half. Everyone else spoke for like 15, 20 minutes. He spoke for like two minutes. And like everything he said was just really strange. And he seemed really like disoriented and out of it. I was like, what is going on here? Like, how was this guy ahead of a, of this of this huge like board? Like, what it, it was just weird. But yeah, I don't know what's going on with the board there. However... I think this is I I think this is going to be good a, a good thing for Kentucky Kingdom to be honest. It was really upsetting to see Ed Hart go. I mean, man, that guy is a legend, and I love him. I think that's that is I think that's the bigger thing. With like people were like, you know, the people that are like, uh, I don't really like this idea, and then people attacking them saying, well, Hershen's not bad. Like they'll do. I think a lot of it isn't so much Hershen taking over, as it is. Ed's leaving. leaving. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the harder part about all of this yeah. is, um, you know, just, I, yeah, I, I, I just, I, it, it, it just sucks, you know, that Ed Hart's yeah. not going to be I agree. in charge of this. And that was, and it was really sad to see. I felt like it was almost like he was like handing his baby off to, to this this corporation is, I mean it literally is his child so it's it was it was definitely that was definitely the hardest part of it I was like oh this is gonna be great I was seeing all the people walk up the managers uh, of the park and uh, I mean the, not the managers the um, like the CEO of Hershen actually was there and then they had the uh, interim park president who was gonna be Craig Ross from Dollywood came up and I was like oh this is gonna be great it's gonna be great they had the governor the mayor and then Ed Hart walked up and I'm like oh man like this is the last time we'll probably see him publicly as I mean, as the head of the park, I mean, this is it. Like he's he's off, riding off into the sunset now. It was it was pretty sad to see. Maybe he'll go by Kennywood. <laughs> oh, maybe. maybe Somebody go by Kennywood, please. <laughs> Hershend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it seems that uh, good thing point. most of the staff's going to be staying. We know that. Um, Jesse Daniels of uh, the park, who's the VP of Guest Experience, tweeted that out. And they also stated that in the conference that that other than Craig Ross, the interim uh, GM of the park, no one else is le- no one else is coming in from Hershen. I think they did shift around some of the people's positions. They said to more adequately fit their corporate uh, format, but nobody is being let go of that that I'm aware of. So this is this is good. This is good to hear. Um, it gives me much hope that with the same staff that was under Ed's leadership that this park, I think still has great potential and, and it will continue to shine. If they were announcing, Oh yeah, we're just, we got to get rid of everybody. We're starting over with our own corporate people. I'd be like, eh, that's where I would start to go. Bob, I yeah, I think we might be heading in a dark path here, but the, the fact that they're committed to withholding all the same staff members really is, is excellent. I think. Uh, but again, Craig Ross, former Dollywood GM, now the interim GM for the park he states that they're going to rely on guest feedback to determine the changes at the park. So they're going to be sending a lot of forms and questionnaires and polls. Yeah. And what a crazy concept! Listen to your guests. <laughs> that's he said. That's all we're. That's all we're going to be. He said. He said I will be outside the gate pretty much. I think he said every day outside the gate at the end of the park day to to be listening to the guest feedback and hear what what, what we what they want us to change, what they want us to keep. And then he said they're also going to be very very. Uh, very quickly releasing a five-year plan for the park that was that was stated multiple times by craig so be looking forward to that i'm sure it'll be after the park's opened up and they have an idea of what their guests want but look 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 for that soon as well for a five-year plan from hirsch and for the park so for me as much as i agree that there are there's a wide spectrum to look at here you know there's there's wild adventures there's darien lake and then there's silver dollar city and there's Ken, and dollywood it's gonna be somewhere in the middle i think of how we see this park managed. It's not going to be Dollywood. It's not going to be Silver Dollar City, guys. Please understand that. But I also think we're going to see a great, great park come out of this. I think I think it's going to be improved. I think we're going to see some good good things come out of this park. I think it has a lot of potential. And I think they recognize that. Hershend recognizes that. I mean, Louisville is one of the top, I believe it's the top 30 most populated cities in America. It has 
a large draw for tourism. So I, I, I don't see them mismanaging this park as they have other properties in the past. I just see them, they seem to be very committed to this. And I mean, to have such a great figure as Craig Ross, I, I mean, like I'd, I'd known about him way before even this had even been announced. I know Craig Ross, I, I knew that name from Dollywood and I knew he's done a great job with the park. So I just think they're committed here to, to, to really improving the park, which is great. We'll have to see though for sure in the future, but yeah, I this is this is definitely a uh, I, I think this is a positive thing for the most part. It, it very very potentially could be a positive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. The only thing that gives me a little bit of hesitation is the fact that they they don't actually own the land. Yeah, and that stuff. Sure, we can. Um, yes, because I... people kept saying that when people would bring up Darien Lake. That was the response. Well, you can't count Darien Lake because they didn't own it. Like, well, then <laughs> if that's your argument, that scares me. Um, but I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, so, you know, I, it, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah. I, I think I think this is the one thing that's going to be a problem. And I don't think this is necessarily a problem. Um but I think that enthusiasts are just like, I, I have a feeling that it's going to like Ed Hart was all about enthusiasts. Oh yeah. Let's oh, build yeah. a cool roller coaster. Let's build a cool roller coaster. Let's, and it worked for Kentucky kingdom. And I just don't know if it's going to be that same pacing for the enthusiasts. Yeah. I don't and think, and I think that, I think that enthusiasts need to understand that, that there's going to be other things coming as well. So Craig Ross did say in the press and, release that they are committed to, I think he said, we understand the value and importance of thrill rides, and that is our main product in the amusement industry, like some, something of that nature. Like that is the main thing that we all, we all expect roller coasters and thrill rides out of, of theme park kind of that was the gist of it but he's like we also will be adding to family we also want to be adding to some family values yeah. for the for the park as well so yeah i don't think we're going to see it the same pacing the same mentality of hershen right uh, and that's not necessarily that, that's not a bad, bad thing. yeah exactly i mean this this in the end might actually draw more guests in because you have that family aspect now even, yeah even larger so for the park it might actually be a better thing maybe not for the enthusiasts who want a coaster every year but uh, you got to think of it yeah from a business standpoint as well i loved ed's mentality with roller coasters but it might be time for kentucky kingdom to to go that route and to get some roller coasters every once in a while too but to to include to include some family rides as well yeah and i think that that's that's going to be a good thing um you know just because that's a hole with Kentucky Kingdom, you know. It's like it's really good for for thrill seekers, but I don't know if you're. It's not. I don't. I don't know that in its current state, I feel like it's a family park. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, like, not not that you couldn't take your family there, but it's. I don't know that it's the ideal park for a whole family to go to, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you especially with like younger kids, and and having. Holiday World, I mean, what, an hour away? People might go, eh, let's just, Holiday World has some more family. They definitely have more family rides there. Let's go over, let's just drive the hour, extra hour, and, and go to Holiday World instead. And, yeah, and, that's, and, a, that's actually another thing that I do want to mention, is yeah. a lot of people were bringing this up, holiday, was like, yeah. oh, well, now now they're going to have to compete. No, I don't, I don't understand why people don't understand the competition, like, Amusement parks don't compete in the traditional sense. There, it seems like the whole industry actually understands that for me to succeed doesn't mean that you have to fail. Yeah, no, yeah, and okay. I, like that's yeah, that's the thing that it's like. There's there's an aspect of competition there, to put yourself on the map, but I don't think it all like, it doesn't. Theme parks you know, the, can the example I used yeah. before. <laughs> Yeah, like the example I used before, like right now, Kings Dominion is hurting because of Kings Dominion's decisions, not because Bush Gardens is adding rides. Though some might say, "Hey, Bush Gardens is definitely competing against them," because look at that big billboard they put outside their park. <laughs> but, uh, well, 
That yeah. Was, I mean, <laughs> but, but at the same time, like you're not. Yeah. I, some, I, I don't really understand the dynamic between those two parks, but, but I mean, for the most part, a park rises and falls on their own merits and it's not, I mean, just look in Pennsylvania. There's parks everywhere, and every single park in Pennsylvania knows every single park in Pennsylvania. They share parts. They help out each other. They're all different companies. They're technically competitors, but they all help each the, other. The competition comes and, into play when you talk about, like, adding new rides and stuff. That's where it's like, oh, this guy just built this big ride. Now i got to build this other big ride. That's where it, it's not necessarily like, let's get this yeah. park out of business, but let's build a ride that's better, and then he'll have to build a ride that's better, and then I'll have to build a ride that's better. And that's kind of where the yeah, competition comes in. Yeah, it still drives it, but it doesn't, like, it's like, you know, when they build a ride, it, you know, it might change how many times somebody goes to a specific park, but it doesn't it, it has an impact to an extent, but it doesn't have the same impact. So, like that that whole argument of like, oh, well, this is going to be them competing. Like, no, that's just that's not how that's not how amusement parks work. That's I thought you not... were going to to allude to the fact that uh, Holiday World almost bought Kentucky Kingdom. <laughs> that would have been oh, fun. No. <laughs> well, you know, that's another thing. Holiday World posted their uh, seventy five year video uh -huh. on Twitter. The uh -huh. same day that this announcement was made, and everybody's like, "Oh, look, Holiday World swore." It's like, <laughs> wait, you're saying they produced this whole video <laughs> in a matter of like minutes, five like, hours, minutes even. Like they had no idea this big press release was going to occur and what was going to be released. Well no, well, no, this actually, well, this actually happened before the press release. I think. Oh, okay. This was the <laughs> night before, so uh, it was like. There were rumblings that morning, like this is this is what's happening. Something's happening, and it's like I don't really think that that's. I mean, okay, let's 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 put it this way. Maybe Holiday World went. You know what? We were going to release it this weekend, but let's just do it now because. <laughs> but that whole thing isn't like oh, Holiday's World sore over it. No, Holiday World's just like look, <laughs> we're seventy five years old and we're proud that we're still like you know, existing a family run park. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I don't think that was a shot. Like people make it out to be.